Welcome, everybody. Um, Joe Weir and Tracy Kozak are here today, and we're going to talk about our plan for the buildings. Our purpose is really to just tell you what the, the process the vestry went through in deciding what, what the final designs will be. And those final designs would be what we would build a capital campaign around in the spring of 2018. So uh, we have to uh, keep moving because there's a 9.30 event down here. Uh, so, <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna go through about six slides and then we're gonna get uh, your thoughts. Okay. Um, when in 2015 we had an architect named Michael Campbell who works with churches around the country look at our whole uh, state of the buildings, and the good news was the structures are fundamentally sound. Um, he said, your parking lot is in dire shape, it's a safety hazard, and we've fixed it, as you know. Um, he said, you don't have handicapped access, and um, how do we do that? And he suggested maybe a chapel for the future. He pointed out the roof needs to be replaced, mm -hmm. that's critical, and there's plumbing and electrical that needs to be updated. So it was a great survey, and uh, he left us with this sketch. Um, and at this point, I'll let uh, Joe Weir, our building team uh, leader, take up the story. Sure. Good morning. Uh, I'm Joe Weir, I'm a 10 o'clocker, so a lot of unfamiliar faces. Uh, don't hold that against me. Yeah. <laughs> I've got teenage kids, so it's hard to get to the 8 o'clock. Uh, well, we appreciate you coming. And uh, this is not an easy process. You know, there are a lot of uh, confinements, uh, restraints on what we want to do. We have grandiose plans, but the reality is there are funding problems and there are um, historic district issues. Yeah. So uh, those are our two biggest obstacles. But, so this was the original plan, and in the original plan, I actually brought this. Okay. Oh, it's not going to work on a white screen. So, oh, well. um, on the original plan, we had things like a chapel, all right? And um, over here, uh, we'll show a better picture of it, at least what it looks like from the outside. But here's an elevator, and here are the existing stairs, obviously our kitchen and thatched roof hall. And the idea... The, the most critical component of all this was to create a connect, right? Uh, to, to bring our, our parishioners off of the parking lot, upstairs, and into church uh, in a way that could facilitate uh, everyone. And, that, and the idea, too, was then that we could all enter into church at the same time. Um, so over here is this, this connector that would take us into the church. Um, that was our original design, and then as we were talking about it more, you know, what we wanted was more than just a, a space for us to walk into a church. We'll, we'll see some early pictures where the connector was originally envisioned to be six, eight feet wide. So nothing more than just a, a conduit to allow people in and out of the church. What we, as it evolved, what we envisioned was something that a little more open space space that where we could collect uh, before we go into church and as we come out uh, for conversation. Instead of having conversation inside the church, have it outside just before you enter. Um, making it a little more open space to create more space for people to walk, ingress and egress, uh, and just facilitated the flow of people better. Uh, and frankly, in my opinion, it would look a little better. Um, so, that's, that was the whole point, is that getting people off the parking lot into church through an elevator and through this connector to the church. Okay, so what you see is, just from a, a picture perspective, this would be the, an addition that would uh, have the new elevator. Okay, so now, there are talks about elevators and staircases. Um, the cheapest way to do it would be to just stick uh, an elevator out here and leave the steps where they are. 
Um, Tracy can speak to it better, but there are some issues with that. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, well, there's just a code issue that says you cannot walk through a, a fire stair to get to anywhere else, including an elevator. So um, the original Campbell idea w was to just walk through the stairway to get to the elevator, which would be the cheapest way to do it. Um, code will not allow that, so you'd have to create another corridor next to the stairway, which would take away this kitchen off of Philbrook, and it would take away part of the stage. So that's not ideal, and um, what we thought would be uh, preserve the function you have now and add an elevator to it would be to put the new elevator where the current stair is and build a new stair next to it, which is what is shown there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, taking away what is already a relatively small stage. Um, yeah, well, one of the things that we're definitely doing right here, um, that we're doing a lot of things right, but one of the things that I see is, because my kids are involved, is the, the youth programs around the performances and the singing. And our stage is already somewhat lacking from size. So if we were to go without, without switching the elevator and the staircase, we'd be taking away some of the space on the stage. And that's not ideal. Now, it may turn out to be that's the way it needs to be done. But that was one of the things we were trying to avoid. OK, so that's, that's the existing, right? Yes? I just want to point out, how, as you all know, how beautiful and iconic and historic this church is, especially from this view up Chapel Street. It's one of the, the greatest treasures of Portsmouth. And so, of course, historically, this is of so much great concern. Yeah. And then the grade, this shows the grade well, right? In terms and of, this is the challenge. It's on the top of this, steep yeah. hill. So how do you make it handicapped and wheelchair friendly? And that's the challenge. Okay. So, yeah, you, you, you're better at speaking. All right, now. so we started out with the idea of um, the Joseph Campbell sketch, which was just a very tiny curved ramp uh, attaching the church to Thaxter in a way that was as small as possible and as minimal as possible so as not to obscure this beautiful building. Um, what we found when we actually finally got a true survey and measured the grades is that we needed, um, well, we had about 30 inches of height to accommodate. And the building code says you can't travel more than, uh, you need 12 inches of travel to go up one inch high. So that's 30, that's 30 feet of ramp. Um, and you also can't go more than 20 feet of ramp without a five foot break to rest. Otherwise, you know, wheelchairs get going too fast and they can't stop. So we started looking at this and um, it became very congested. It was a difficult ramp to maneuver. There could be some accident potential. It, we really tried to force it in there just didn't work. So then we looked at making a more user-friendly ramp that's not so steep, it has the proper rest, and it just took up the whole space between the church and Baxter. It just became this sea of ramps and stairs, and, and that in itself is um, kind of hostile and not very user-friendly. Yeah, so, 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 oh, I'm sorry. So what you're looking at here, this is just sort of ramps zigzagging back and forth. Yeah, just with, with also stairs, because right. um, uh, ramps are only good for, for wheelchairs and things with wheels, but if someone is walking and just needs a little bit of steadiness, sometimes a stair with handrails is much easier. So ideally, we provide both options. I, I will say that um, one of my partners at JSA Architects is a uh, St. John's parishioner, Todd Hansen. You may know him, um, lifelong marathoner, recently disabled and in a wheelchair. And so he provided invaluable uh, insight from the view of a wheelchair on, on how to make uh, his church and our church uh, accessibly friendly. So uh, based on his input, uh, he actually said ramps are really not even good for wheelchairs because they're hard to push. If you're trying to uh, maneuver a wheelchair on your own, uh, sometimes it's difficult to find the strength or maneuverability to control the wheelchair. And that lifts are actually much uh, easier. So he suggested a lift. It takes up less room. We also have the stairs, which provides that option. And uh, it minimizes the footprint of the connector, where you come out of the front of the church around this corridor, either steps or lifts. And then there's a corridor connecting to Thaxter. This particular scheme shows a chapel addition on the back, which would be optional. But it would allow um, a separate entrance into the chapel without disrupting what's happening here. Or you can just go straight into Baxter Hall. Yeah. And then in this version too, this is a relatively simple
connector. Uh, again, it's just eight feet wide. And, and, and you can see it in the picture here. Is that right, Tracy? Well, this it's one? seven feet clear on the inside. Okay, all right, seven feet, even smaller. It's, it's really <laughs> Okay. <narrow. laughs> all right, okay, so this then is, is the picture outside. This one is, you know, shows it as being made out of glass. Some people may have some issues with that, and we'll discuss that. Um, but again, relatively um, small footprint. Uh, and again, the, whole, the only purpose would be to allow people to get in and out of church uh, without going outside. The problem with that, though, is it was so tight and narrow. I mean, when you have a congregation coming out all at once into Baxter, it could get crowded and traffic jam. And uh, if somebody stopped to talk to somebody, <laughs> uh, boy, the, no one would go anywhere. So the, then the thought was, well, how do we make this a little bit more spacious so that people can talk? Because that's important to us, um, but also can still move freely. And that requires more width. So in this scheme, uh, we expanded uh, this expanded area outside the door, so you could have some room to stand or sit, uh, or you can continue on and connect into the spaces here. It actually bridged um, from building to building in this whole area. Uh, we put in a new ramp uh, for the exterior access into Thaxter Hall here. And actually, that's where we ended up, right? There was a the middle yeah. scheme that yeah, right. didn't quite do the trick. Um, in this scheme, there is no chapel shown. It's just a, an improved uh, outdoor paved terrace, like a patio, with some landscaping, which preserves the brand new stairway, which was just built. Um, so that's not reconfigured. It also provides an actual handicapped uh, compliant entrance into the sacristy. Uh, right now, it's sort of close, but not quite. There's a ramp going right up to the door, which makes it um, almost impossible to stop a wheelchair and reach the door without rolling backwards. So um, that's where we are. So, so in the earlier version, one of the ideas was to build a chapel on the back of the actual hall. Uh, some parishioners actually are very strong advocates of that. The idea of the chapel was to have a place for uh, people to congregate if you're part of a wedding. Or before or after the wedding, um, or if, if the funeral is being held, family members can collect in this chapel. Uh, so that that is one of the ideas. We certainly um, are still still thinking about that. The problem is that it's not cheap. Uh, a few hundred thousand dollars just to build the structure, and then extra money just to put pews in it and, and everything else. So uh, again, that that it's a money constraint, it's a money consideration. So um, it's just one of the things that we're dealing with. So in this concept. If you can see, uh, let's see, right here is the current exterior of Thaxter Hall. So here are the stairs that we, down, down here. So all of this over here is the space between the church and Thaxter Hall. All this over here. Um, so in lieu of a chapel, we would have this open space here that can be, can remain open, or we can design it so you can close it off, you know, with partitions or whatever, and so this one, f for the time being, at least until a chapel can be built, whether that's 5, 10, 20 years down the road, who knows, but this could then serve as that multi-purpose room for funerals or, or weddings or whatnot. But, so that was, that was the idea there, but absent those types of events, this would still be some open space that you know, people before or after church can congregate. And if we <coughs> outfit it with some benches or whatever, just to accommodate um, and, and make it an inviting space. Um, so there are two approaches. You can go historic. You can try to match the building with brick and granite and make it historic uh, in the same style that there is. Or the approach that we pursued here was to try to make it invisible with glass. Um, you see this already downtown at the Discover Portsmouth Center, where you have the old historic building and that glass connector next mm -hmm. to it. So we thought that would be a minimal way where you can see through the glass and it won't obstruct the building behind it. If this were pushed back a little further, uh, I would feel more comfortable about creating a massive solid structure. But um, And that's still an option, and it could be something the Historic District Commission says you must do, and that's fine. Or you all may say we like that better, and that's fine. But just to start the discussion, we thought that to try to make it as uh, invisible as possible might be a better approach. Mm -hmm. And, and 
arguments for or against approaches like this are costs. Um, glass is a lot less expensive than brick. Uh, so, um, you know, then there's lighting. Uh, this, uh, this will allow for a lot more light, natural light, to get into the, to the structure. Uh, so those are certainly uh, pros. Um, it does it match the existing structures? No, it doesn't. Uh, but then it comes down to then what will the HDC say? Uh, what, what, what will they allow us to do? Uh, you know, one, one of the things you know, th about the whole connector is there's historic district commission requirements, and then there's the Americans with Disabilities Act. And, and the ADA, in most cases, will trump anything the port historic demit, uh, this district commission. Sorry, not full. Um, so you know that, that 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 that's one argument for the connector. Now you know how it exactly will appear from the outside is another thing. But um, that that is one thing that that we have in our favor uh, when we're trying to accomplish this. And that's look, we're trying to accommodate uh, individuals with disabilities. I think one thing that uh, we didn't mention yet, it was in, in locating this where it is, you probably know this anyway, but at, at this side of the church instead of the sacristy, the idea and goal was that everybody, regardless of mobility, enters and leaves the church from the same place, that there's no segregation. Mm -hmm. I think it's old fashioned with some What was your question? I'm sorry. How do you get out back to the cemetery? There's um, doors in the back? There, yes, there there are doors that open to the back garden, but that does bring one of the... I was remembering the walkway you said. Yes. Yep, so you can walk through this. It's just it has a roof over it. One of the challenges, though, that still needs to be fully addressed is um, the lawnmowers and how the lawnmowers get back here. And there are some options, whether we explore access through here or some removable panels through here. Both of those can be explored. Is that a heated building? This would be, uh, yes, it should be conditioned the same as any interior building. In fact, that's required by code. And uh, the question came up last week in this presentation about the memorial walkway. Uh, what is there are just stones. No, no remains are there. So uh, it's, it's uh, less of an issue to just remove the, relocate the stones. But they could be reincorporated into this this um, structure, or they could be relocated elsewhere on the grounds. Um, either way, uh, I think there are options. So how big is that space behind the entranceway there? Uh, Let me go back to the plan. The reason I'm asking is that uh, that's okay. right. There's a lot of pressure on us right now for meeting space. For instance, you've got to be out of here in a half hour. We can't have Sunday forums every Sunday in here because we're, you know, the younger people need it. So if there's any other way to create some meeting space, that might be a, a high priority. Um, well, you can see this is the stage as it is now. And it's a, a little bit wider but shorter. So it's similar in square footage as the stage. Um, we also have a uh, platform lift up to the stage so that um, all people who would like to access the stage can, regardless of the mobility. Um, apropos of what, of what did said, the space that you had originally for a chapel there, oh, frankly, I come from a church that took out the, all the pews through, um, years ago and it's been working around. Nevertheless, it's a lot harder for me to see that as a chapel I would ever go into and use, chairs or pews or no pews, than it is for me to see a space that still meets the uses for which you, that you mentioned before, gathering before a wedding or that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be a chapel. And it could be extra space that would be meeting space and probably be used quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think the way, the way we're thinking about it right now is that space isn't necessarily uh, a chapel as we understand it with pews and everything. It, it's an open space. Could you put some chairs in there and hold some sort of service? Sure. But it is more of a space for a classroom, for uh, pre and post weddings or, or funerals. Uh, and the idea is that um, the, the chapel idea wouldn't die. It'd still be uh, an idea that in future years with more funding, 
we can still build it out on the back where we're contem presently contemplating. Joe, is there, um, do the windows open? I think it's hot in the summer. I think they should. We could design that to actually be a very good passive solar space. Um, we have some clear story windows up above and the low areas below. Um, but without that, you're right, it would be a greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cooker. I just commend all of you that have worked on this for the time and effort you've put into it. I mean, when I see the different um, process and that, it's pretty remarkable. And I must say, as much as I'm into history and I love the old structures, I really like this. Well, well thank you. It's, it's, um, it's been fun doing it, exciting. Uh, the, the possibilities, uh, although, you know, trying to accommodate everyone's interests, it's very difficult. You know, it's not going to happen. You're, you're going to have a challenge. Right? Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But I, I, are there any renderings where you're not having this connected with that flat roof? Has anybody? Uh, yes, the Michael Campbell rendering had the historic brick arches and the heavy stone and the. I think there was a picture. Mm -hmm. um, that scheme didn't work because he didn't have a survey at that time, so there's no ramp or mm -hmm. there's no way it would have it would get bigger. But again, that's okay. an option if um, you know there's a wish. There's a, a very strong language of arches and brick and granite. But if those windows were rounded over on the top, it would look yeah. better. But yeah. that to me looks like seco science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a comment made last week. Not, not saying yeah. that. If if you could, yeah, even if you could design these to make it look like there's an arch there, yeah. uh, aesthetically, it may be much more appealing. Yeah. And right. finally, have you all together thrown out the earlier idea of the smaller connector? Because people are still actually going to use the front doors of the church. Not everybody that yeah. is going to, because I park up front. Yeah. I actually like opening those big doors mm -hmm. and entering the church. Yeah. Um, so I don't think 100% of the parishioners are going to, I guess we have to accommodate a mass of people using this connector because there's still plenty of people that are going to walk right out the three front doors. Right. Because I believe this will become a space where a lot of people congregate and they'll have to go out those front doors to get around them. Yeah. We mm -hmm. talk about traffic flowing, you know, mm -hmm. but, and, but we also talk about meetings, and I think this will become very yeah. congested. That people will expand, conversations will move there, but it'll, the congestion yeah. will expand to move right. Well, if I, understand, if I understand your point, the, the, the three doors up front are still going to be used. You know, this is, you know, so if you're parking in the upper parking lot, the most likely <laughs> choice is to go, uh, if, if you're not wheelchair bound, to, to go uh, through the existing doors. Um, so the connector then is um, at a minimum <coughs> to facilitate those that have uh, handicap needs. Um, you know, one of the I other ideas on our list was um, improving Thatcher Hall. Uh, so Thatcher Hall, if, 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 if you look closely, half the lights don't even work. Uh, and just sort of giving it uh, a facelift and, and making it into uh, what I'm a strong proponent of is a, a useful asset to the church, um, where uh, it could actually be rented out and could serve as a revenue source. You know, church church functions take priority, uh, but if we can uh, upgrade it and make it an attractive venue, because it has a kitchen that, that adds a little more value to it, then um, it then it would just be a bigger asset for our community, which would be great. You know, our community within the church and, and the community. Uh, Don't we already do that? We do, uh, but uh, my guess is we could probably do it a lot more if it was a much more inviting um, location. You know, here from the old school, <clears throat> I personally wouldn't want to see anything change the front of things more Bring to our church is the probably the people's Episcopal church in New England. But we've got by for years and years and years. I, I think we, some of the things that probably need to be made, probably a, a lift on the front on the steps of, of, in the city of Portland. is going to do a lot of work out there. Has anybody talked to the city about what they're going to do? That comment came up last week. What, what was said? I don't recall. Um, 
Yep. You're gonna they, the sidewalk. They keep putting it off. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. In front of the church, along by the cemetery, and then the flower guy. That's where they're designing. But the thing of it is, don't take away. I realize you got to make things. You know, things have changed. In the modern day and the computers have taken over. But I just don't want to see the front of that shirt touch. Well, I think we have to balance that all oh, with the. Uh, you know, we've had one parishioner fall on the steep stair out front. We have had other parishioners slip. Uh, so I think we have to certainly care about the history of the church, but we have to care about the people. Too. The thing of it is, though, I realize that now it's for some work. That's been there for almost 200 some odd years. It's doing it very, very well. There's ways of doing things. And what I'm getting at is there's other ways of doing something to make it safe. Yep. And then we should look into that instead of going to thousands and thousands of dollars for something that's not really the church can't do. Yeah, and that's why we're taking this slowly and, and sharing how we arrived at what we have now and listening, and because uh, you know, we only want to do it once. As far as this building here, it's only the building So the changes all there, all along the good, great. The electrical panel should be changed, but that's my thinking. But that's, those are the important things to preserve the church and the safety of the church. And I wouldn't want to see the front of this building to take away the people from up here and walk the sidewalk and walk the porch and the church. It's got a lot of history. And I know by taking care of the one house, which is 300 years old, we wouldn't want to make any changes, only necessary and safe to say. So that stop right there, could that be cut in half? Oh. Does it have to be that? As far as I'm getting what walk, walk is, I'm going to go to the next. You know, I used to walk in the chapel on State Street when I was a kid. I used to go there all the time. So I, I, I just, to me, that's too big to be on the side of that. I'm not saying it's going to happen. <laughs> so, w would your attitude change? Attitude is probably a strong word. Um, would your opinion change? Thanks. If that, and yeah, would your opinion change if it was more brick and blended more with more brick? Because that reminds me, right. I don't insult anybody. That's fine. Yeah. Some kind of efficiency. So, so one of the things that we've been floating around is making it brick, more brick and window. You know, something that would blend a little more. That's right. Uh, that's right. So then it comes down to uh, money. Um, what were, what the historic district commission would allow us to do. Uh, their preference may be something like this. I don't know. Uh, but we, we've given those things, ideas, thoughts. And I think all of us here would probably say, if we had something that could blend the two buildings together, and that'd be ideal. The other thing is that glass that you notice up there that across the street is all glass. Mm -hmm. They've had problems with that for years and years and years. So what's the down the road to that wall that glass being and what problems are we going to run into? Yeah, that's a fair comment. It's a fair comment. It would be, it have to be fully explored. I think we've got other people. Yeah. Yes. I think everybody's got uh, their own view, no pun intended, about what this looks like. What I like about this treatment is that it introduces a modern element into a very historic structure, which for the general populace would say, what's going on at St. John's? It looks like great, looks like they're modernizing their whole thing. So the visual aspect, this only presents one view. If you were across the street and looking at this, you would see basically the massive church which you have and the uh, elements that we have, which we look so good. And this would really blend into uh, the whole grounds that we have here, introducing a modern element. Yeah. But, then that's but, but the way people yeah. see it and look at it, everybody's going to have an opinion. Right. With all due respect to the architects and 
various committees within the church. It's just so inconsistent. It's just, it just looks like a greenhouse that's been plugged in between Paris Hall and the church. I just think you're going to have to find another way. And still accommodate the primary concern is this ADA thing. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. my, my perspective, that just doesn't Yeah, I, I don't uh, disagree. I'm sort of agnostic at this point. We're just trying to find a way that um, will be financially re responsible and we'll, we'll follow all, all the rules. Now, one, one thing I can't say, and we're, we've run out of time, unfortunately, but certainly if anyone has any questions, uh, John, my, my, anybody, ask us some questions. Um, one of the things we have to remember when we've talked about at the vestry meetings is, uh, sure, we have a nice big structure. It's a, it's a, it's a gem. Yeah, the Thaxter Hall uh, is um, serviceable and can be even more serviceable. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, what those buildings are are just something that facilitates a community of people. And we have to accommodate and consider everyone. And you know, even if it is the small minority, of people who have physical limitations. So that's one of the things that we're trying to accomplish here is making sure that all of us, you know, um, Rob says it every Sunday, and I can't say it for beta, but we're, we're all welcome, right? We want, we want this to be a home that, for everyone. And this, this is part of trying to make that happen. Okay, so, okay um, again, sorry for making this short, but if you have any questions, please let us know. Don't try it on.